Hey, welcome to Hannity, and we are coming to you live from the MGM Grand. We're in beautiful Las Vegas, where in less than 48 hours, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton will face off in the third and final presidential debate right here on the Fox News Channel. Also tonight, new information released by WikiLeaks could upend Clinton's presidential campaign. And today, the FBI releases documents related to the Clinton server investigation. And what did they uncover? But a quid pro quo offer. We'll explain that in just a few minutes. Newt Gingrich will also join us, as well as Laura Ingram. But first tonight, we'll report what the mainstream media refuses to tell you. Now, get a pen and notepad ready. Throughout the program, we're going to put a lot of things up on the screen that you're going to want to see. Now, a shocking new undercover video from James O'Keefe's Project Veritas appears to show Democratic operatives admitting that they're responsible for stoking the violence that we have seen at Trump campaign rallies. Now, Fox News Channel has not independently verified the content in the the video, but what was caught on tape is beyond disturbing. And there's a lot more to come. Now, we reached out to the people and groups mentioned in that full video, as well as the Clinton campaign and the DNC for comments. Scott Fovel and Americans United for Change are the only ones to get back to us. Fovel's statement about the video reads in part, quote, this scheme to cast legitimate organizing activities as a sinister plot is nothing but a ruse. Fovel later goes on to say, all who view these recordings should remember that they are speculative conversations where we attempted to correct a misguided idea put forth by O'Keefe and his cronies, and we did not take the bait. And the president of Americans United for Change, Brad Woodhouse, he responded to the video by saying in part, quote, Americans United for Change has always operated according to the highest ethical and legal standards. Scott Fovel, he's no longer associated with Americans United for Change. <laughs> All right, now here to get the reaction we bring with us, the author of the New York Times bestseller, Treason, former Speaker of the House, Fox News contributor, Newt Gingrich. I want to read one more thing that came out here, Mr. Speaker, if I may, because in this video, they explain the flow of money and their rapid response operations. And this is what they say. The campaign pays the DNC. The DNC pays Democracy Partners. Democracy Partners pays the Foval Group. The Foval Group goes out and ex executes the shh on the ground, meaning when they foment anger and fighting and even take credit and brag about that they're responsible for what happened in Chicago when they stopped Donald Trump from giving a speech. What is your reaction to all these tapes? Well, I think if it turns out to be a systematic organization that blocked Trump from even having a meeting in Chicago, it's a direct assault on democracy and on the rule of law. And of course, just yesterday, you had a Republican campaign headquarters in North Carolina that was firebombed, uh, something which I think was an act of intimidation that's designed really to say to people, you better not go to Republican headquarters. Who knows what's going to happen? I mean, this is the sort of thing the left is so terrified of a genuine outsider winning that you're getting this kind of really illegal and, and anti-American activities uh, that we should all be condemning, including, by the way, Hillary Clinton. I mean, she should adamantly condemn it. She should fire anybody who's in the chain that paid for it. Uh, and, and let's clean this thing up. Well, Mr. Speaker, I take it a step further. I want to know what she knows and when she knew it, because they are more than suggesting, they are saying on this tape that they are coordinating with the DNC. They are coordinating with, by the way, that would be a violation of campaign finance law, but they're, the, all of this is coordinated, all of this is designed, that this is organized by them around the country to create a false image that Trump campaigns are violent. And they said they're doing it in every wow. city, in every town, in every state, and they themselves are fomenting the violence. I mean, what does that say Look, if the DNC one, and, the, and the campaign's involved in this? Well, one of the tragedies of having a politically corrupt Justice Department is that there's nobody there to do the policing. I mean, who, who are you going to turn to? Uh, because these people are so deeply now committed to a corrupt establishment that you can't get the kind of response you ought to be getting. Uh, and this goes all the way back to 2012 when there were clear examples of voter intimidation in Philadelphia and the attorney general himself refused to investigate it. Uh, so I think yeah. this is these people are living in a gray zone that is being created by the decay of the justice system in the United States. They call it conflict engagement is how they describe it. But I want to go back to this, how this is all intertwined here. Foval explained and is on tape here saying that they set it up 
to allow the DNC and the Clinton campaign plausible deniability in the event that the nature of deliberate violence is discovered. The thing that we have to watch is to make sure there's a double blind between the actual campaign, the actual DNC, and what we're doing. A a double blind so there can be plausible deniability that they heard anything about it. What is he? Well, he's admitting they're coordinating. He's admitting that they're well, involved. And, he's in, and, admitting they're informed. And remember, this, this continual effort to have extra legal behaviors that, that in some cases are criminal goes all the way back in our experience to Madison, Wisconsin, where when Governor Scott Walker uh, po passed his reforms, they had 100,000 people in the street they had the Capitol occupied for six months. And remember that both the governor and his wife had death threats. I mean, people on the left are terrified that they're going to lose their control of government and they're going to lose their ability to dictate to the rest of us. And this is the kind of stuff we should expect. And if Trump wins, you're going to see more stuff like this as they try to stop the reforms. Let me now move on to the discoveries, both of the FBI and their investigation and WikiLeaks and what we're discovering. And while we're speaking, Mr. Speaker, I'm going to put up on the screen, you know, you got John Podesta wishing that the Bernardino shooter was named Chris. You got the head of the Clinton campaign uh, literally, you know, calling about taxes and health, hypersensitive issues. Political uh, reporter has offered a campaign a chance to edit the story. Uh, we have focus group testing whether or not Obama's father is a Muslim. So we discover in WikiLeaks how dirty tricks were used even against Barack Obama. The campaign believed that Obama committed voter fraud in 2008, but I was watching you this weekend, they're making a big deal of that. In, in terms of Donald Trump suggesting it's a possibility. As you look at that, as you look at the conflicts of interest, as you look at the pay-to-play scheme that was discovered over the money that was raised for Haiti and the lists that are made for Clinton supporters and donors that they get preferential treatment in terms of the contracts that would be awarded after 150,000 people died. In its totality, what are we to make of all of this? Well, look, this is a giant criminal enterprise uh, disguised as a foundation and disguised as a campaign. And you can tell, though, an article that came out today I thought was fascinating that analyzed donations by news media to the Clinton and Trump campaigns. Ninety six percent of all the donations went to Clinton. So that means among the news media, the ratio was 24 to 1 in favor of Hillary Clinton. Now, of course, they wouldn't suggest that they're biased, but 24 to 1, which, by the way, is about the same number as the amount of minutes dedicated Friday a week ago between the Trump 11-year-old tape and WikiLeaks. It was 23 minutes on Trump and 57 seconds in all three networks combined on WikiLeaks. So part of what's going on is the elite media which really shouldn't be considered news media. They're really propaganda. I'm thinking that uh, the Columbia School of Journalism should rename itself into the Columbia School of Propaganda because these people aren't engaged in news. They are methodical propagandists for the left, smothering negative information about Hillary and maximizing uh, negative information about Trump in a way that is a huge disservice to the United States of America and to the people yeah. of the United States. Mr. Speaker, indulge me for about a minute here, because and we'll put it up full screen here for our audience to see. As I just run down the list of revelations here that the news media is not reporting uh, as they seem obsessed with allegations one after another about Donald Trump that one by one seem to be becoming debunked. But, you know, we know that Clinton had a public and private position on many of the main issues. If we can put this up on the screen, guys. And Obama knew about the Clinton's private email account. And we know that Clinton claimed Saudi Arabia and Qatar funded ISIS. Well, that's fascinating considering you know, both of them abuse women, gays and lesbians, and persecute Christians and Jews, and they still accepted money from them. That Clinton showed concern about vetting refugees, said we can't possibly vet them. That means she's willing to gamble with the lives of the American people. That 
Clinton bragged about being invited into Putin's inner sanctum. She was giving Donald Trump a hard time about that, that she said she's removed from the struggles of the middle class. She's so rich. They have a plan to attack Catholics and evangelicals and infiltrate the Catholic Church. Uh, she admitted a no-fly zone would be very difficult, but supports it publicly. She went back and forth over the Keystone Pipeline, said fracking was a gift. She praised Wall Street in her Wall Street in her paid speeches. She supported a plan that would cut Social Security. Uh, she showed support for open borders in an open hemisphere. She hated to use the term everyday Americans. Then we've got the media, CNBC offering Clinton advice. The New York Times, by the way, allowing quote edits, the Boston Globe pumping up her campaign, Universe, uh, Univision giving advice, MSNBC getting fed questions, Donna Brazil leaking town hall questions, Podesta calling Latinos needy. I mean, I can't even touch the surface here. All of which describes corruption at a level. I'll be honest, that is bigger almost than Watergate to me. But the news media is ignoring oh, this it. Is, no, no, look, this is a hundred times bigger than Watergate. Watergate was the stupid action of a handful of people who actually got caught up in the cover-up. Remember, Watergate is one break-in of, of the Democratic National Headquarters and then the effort to cover up how it happened. That is a fairly narrow thing. This is a level of corruption that permeates the federal government. This is a level of corruption that you find in the Veterans Administration, you find in the FBI now. I mean, Comey has become a director who is corrupting the system. And you can, you can just tell by looking at, as more and more stuff comes out, you have to say to yourself, how could they possibly not have indicted her? And the reason is simple. The fix was in. You have the Attorney General of the United States in a secret meeting with a former president the week his wife is going to meet with the FBI. And we're supposed to believe that it was purely an accident. This is, this is a well, level that, of fundamental and, dishonesty across the whole system. And the emails of WikiLeaks also show racism and sexism and misogyny and anti-Semitism and the media ignores it. And if it was Republicans that were fomenting violence at every Democratic Hillary event, I think it would be covered in more detail by the media. But I got to run, Mr. Speaker. I know you got a big group of people waiting for you there. I won't keep you any longer. And uh, have fun. It's Congratulations on the success of the book. And coming up, we have more reaction to the Project Veritas undercover video. Laura Ingram will weigh in next. Also, later tonight. Mainstream media being fair with all of the coverage? No. Why? They don't check the facts. I noticed that with me. Fox and Friends co-host Ainsley Earhart interviewed Melania Trump earlier today. And Ainsley is here later tonight. And also, as Hannity continues live from the Vegas Strip and the MGM Grand. All right, joining us now, editor-in-chief of Life Z, Fox News contributor, nationally syndicated radio host, Laura Ingram. You know, here's what's fascinating about this to me, Laura, is you know, they're bragging about a grand scheme. They talk about all the connections that they have to the Clinton campaign, even the White House and the DNC, to orchestrate a lie, a narrative, propaganda to the American people that Trump people are like this. And they've been doing it the whole campaign season. Right. And now they got caught. What if Republicans did this? Oh, no. I mean, uh, if, if, if a Hillary Clinton campaign office had been firebombed, it would have led every newscast and every Donald Trump supporter would have been tarred with the action. OK, but, you know, when that happened over the weekend, it was basically brushed aside by the media as a as a one off. And in this in this uh, Project Veritas tape, Sean, really does comport with what you've been saying, I've been saying all along. There's just been, there've been too many cute little actions uh, that seemed a little too convenient during this campaign. Remember that guy who yelled out during the primary season, that question about the Muslim, Muslims at one point, and then he just disappeared, and, and they were trying to engage Trump on that about, I think it was about the deportation or something. It was just, it was just so obvious that it was, it didn't seem like it was real. It seemed like these were actors. Remember, Hillary Clinton had that little girl ask her the question at the event last week or the week before. It turns out the question was scripted by her parent 
who uh, himself had a connection to state government in Pennsylvania. So a lot of this stuff is fraudulent, uh, and a lot of this stuff is this. orchestrated, and it's propaganda. And and it, it is it is exactly what Hillary's record is: fraudulent, filled with propaganda, filled with lies, filled with media, uh, you know, amplifications, and it goes along with the entire campaign's. Uh, outlook, frankly. It doesn't surprise me This one is bit. right out of Rules for Radicals. This Absolutely. is Saul Alinsky. And what I think is more fascinating, they have been fomenting violence this yeah. entire campaign season. Against they police admit officers, it. too. They brag about it, and then they brag about how the DNC and the Clinton campaign and even the White House is involved. How do you, oh, yeah, how do you justify this? Well, I, again, they don't think they have to justify it, Sean, just like, just like what Hillary says in response to the private server. She bats away these questions like they're, they're, they're pesky little mosquitoes, and then she gets back on her message. Oh, no, that's not what Director Comey said. I think he actually confirmed what I said, uh, you know, in, in her question and answer with reporters or on Capitol Hill. So their, their so, modus to operandi here, Sean, is to deny and then quickly move on. And it works for them because unlike with Trump, the well, press will let it go. Well, they talk about creating plausible deniability. But, but this is so serious that they brag about, we've got operatives in every state. They're going Absolutely. to every event. And they're, they're fomenting organized. violence. And they're, they've been trained how to ask the questions. You know, they even admitted they're responsible for Chicago. There was yeah. that 69-year-old woman, apparently they claim was an operative. And they get people in line at 6 a.m. so that they're in the front, so that the media hears their question. And the media buys it hook, line, and sinker. Yeah. We, it seems to me we've been, we have been victims of a huge organized lie and propaganda campaign this entire election season. And I gotta take a break, so I'm gonna ask you about WikiLeaks yeah. when we get back. Sure. More with Laura Ingram straight ahead. Plus, the FBI releases more documents today related to Clinton's email investigation. Wait until you hear what a senior State Department official tried to get the FBI to do, and then later tonight. Those words, they were offensive to me, uh, and they were inappropriate. And he apologized to me. And I expect, I accept his apology. Our own Ainsley Earhart interviewing Melania Trump earlier today. She is here with that exclusive interview and more as we continue Hannity live from the Vegas Strip and the MGM Grand. Straight ahead. The media is trying to rig the election by giving credence, and this is so true, by giving credence to false stories that have no validity. They take a story with absolutely nothing that didn't exist and they put it front page news because they want to poison the minds of the voters. They take things and statements and put it in from 30 years ago, from 20 years ago. By the way, just so you understand, just to be very clear, events that never happened, just you do understand that. All right, Donald Trump earlier tonight campaigning in the swing state of Wisconsin. Joining us now, Laura Ingram. You know, when you think of Donald Trump and all that he's been through in the last two weeks, and the Republican establishment stabbing him in the back and sabotaging him, <coughs> Paul Ryan. And you think of the Democrats doing everything they could do to sabotage. And then you think about the media on Team Clinton. And then you look at the polls, Washington Post, ABC, of only a four-point spread. He's up four in Ohio, and he's dead even in North Carolina and Nevada. It's yeah. frankly a miracle. Yeah, I mean, four points is not that much. He, he has to flip a number of these uh, battleground states, Sean. There's no doubt about it, unless the polls are wildly off. He's got work to do. I will say um, that, that it, what, what's incredible here is that if Republicans, and I mean all Republicans, every last one of them were united and they were fanning out across America, going through the list of WikiLeaks revelations that I have on my sheet here, which is stunning. Well, I'm going to put them up. I'm going to put, put them up on the oh, screen. Sean. We'll split our screen. It's crazy. Yeah, let's 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 put that up on the screen because when you look at the enormity of the corruption. The media's involvement, the campaigns being, uh, you know, uh, being, uh, you know, on a string for the media, like puppeteers at, at, at the campaign yeah. with members of the media. All the other things you have there, the, the Hillary saying I have a public and private uh, position. Uh, what well, that means said she on so wait, many wait, issues. Interpret that. She, that. She's admitting she lies. I'm going to tell you one thing in public, but in private, I'm going to tell you something totally different. And we have specific instances 
that she does it over and over again. It's hilarious yeah, and, on one level. Yeah, and, and also, Sean, when she's talking about uh, she's talking about she wants a better relationship with Russia, and she hopes we can have a better relationship with Putin. Now she criticizes Trump at various times for indicating we don't want to be at war with Russia. Of course, now as President Obama is basically threatening war with Russia, uh, looks like wag the dog to a lot of people. Uh, but, but Sean, think about it. If every Republican, with, with that graphic up on the screen, if every Republican went coast to coast, and all they did was talk about the corruptocrats in the Clinton campaign and what they would do to America. If that's all they did, and then talked about how Trump's plan for prosperity and tax reform well, here's would create a problem, jobs though, and opportunity, Laura. would be up, up 10 points. Okay, here's a problem. Guys like Paul Ryan, who I've lost a lot of respect for, have spent more time attacking Trump than bringing up what you and I are talking about, or right. talking about Supreme Court justices and the type that Hillary would appoint or the need for a border wall or Hillary you want to talk about one of the most corrupt things she mentions here is she says oh we can't vet refugees well she's gonna bring them in at a at an increase of 550 percent that means by her own admission she's gambling with the lives of the American people why isn't Paul Ryan talking about that I think in 23 days win lose or draw we need a long conversation about whether or not he should be Speaker of the House well, I, I, I think, you know, anyone who calls himself or herself a Republican or a conservative who is not doing everything in his or her power legally, <laughs> unlike the Clintons, to stop Hillary Clinton from, from becoming president really has lost all ability or all credibility uh, or, uh, to, to be complaining in the future if Hillary Clinton should become president. Don't complain about Supreme Court justices. Don't complain about anemic uh, GDP. Don't complain about anything because when you could have worked to stop her, you were dumping all over Trump every chance you got or sitting on the sidelines and, and hoping secretly and, 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 and texting your friends, aha, you know, Trump's behind. I don't want to hear from any of these people. If Hillary Clinton wins this, God help our country, but don't complain when you spent most of your time oh, no, Laura, going after Donald Trump. They own it. They, and I'm going to tell you, and Paul Ryan and Republicans have been more critical of Donald Trump of than they've they ever been about Obama, than they've ever been about Hillary. And frankly, their weakness created Donald Trump. Their broken promises yeah, helped he's a create symptom. Donald Trump. Yeah, he's a symptom exactly. of right, what they didn't do for the people. Sean, just one more thing. In the, yeah. in the uh, Veritas tape. Uh, what they did was they also made, they were basically making fun of mentally ill people because they were saying, we throw out these mentally ill people to yeah. create and these homeless disruptions. People. Lots yeah, of stuff. And homeless. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, we'll get to more of that tomorrow night. By the way, James O'Keefe told me today that tomorrow's tape is going to be bigger than today. So we'll see. Yeah. Will All CNN right, cover Laura, it? Will MSNBC cover it, Sean? That's no. the question. No, the CNN has, uh, has operatives that give questions to their favorite liberals before debates in town halls. Thank you, Donna Brazil. And, and, <laughs> yeah, and, then, and then MSNBC literally takes verbatim questions before Hillary Clinton interviews and then reads it verbatim. It's Unbelievable. Sleazy. Sleazy. All right, coming up today, the FBI released a new batch of documents related to Hillary Clinton's email investigation, and they revealed that a senior State Department official wanted to make a deal with the Bureau over the classification of Clinton's emails. The FBI is calling it a quid pro quo. I might suggest it's bribery, and also tonight. Mainstream media being fair with all of the coverage? No. Why? They don't check the facts. I noticed that with me. Ainsley Earhart sitting down with Melania Trump earlier today. The full interview airs tomorrow on Fox and Friends, but Ainsley is here tonight to give us a preview. She joins us coming up next tonight as we continue from Vegas and the MGM Grand. Mainstream media being fair with all of the coverage? No. Why? They don't check the facts. I noticed that with me since uh, my husband announced story after story. Even if I say they, my answers, they don't listen to me. They would prefer to listen to somebody else who doesn't know me. Uh, that's why all the immigration story came out, as you remember. New York Post did two rows, in two, two days in the row. Um, my pictures that I took as a model, I'm very proud of my body. I'm not ashamed of my body. 
I'm very comfortable in my body. All right, that was Melania Trump talking with Fox and Friends co-host Ainsley Earhart about the mainstream media's coverage of her husband and her camp or her and her husband's campaign during the sit-down. Uh, Ainsley asked Mrs. Trump about her reaction to the leaked audio of her husband from 2005. Let's take a look. Those words they were offensive to me, uh, and they were inappropriate. And he apologized to me, and I expect I accept his apology. And um, I, we are moving on. From a woman's perspective, what were your thoughts when you heard those tapes? I, this is not the man that I know. This is, uh, we could see, as I always said, as my husband said as well, for a successful businessman, uh, entrepreneur, entertainer, to, that he did so much in his life, been on so many shows, so many tapes, um, it's very hard to run for a public office and um, he did it anyway. He said, I want to help American people. I want to keep America safe. I want to bring back jobs, uh, bring back economy. So our children, our future will be the best way possible. All right, the full interview with Melania Trump is going to air tomorrow, beginning at 6 a.m. on Fox and Friends. And joining us now is our own Ainsley Earhart. Uh, first of all, congratulations. I watched the interview. It's amazing. Thank you. It, um, I have gotten to know her, and I want to get your thoughts on this. She's such an impressive woman. English is her fifth language, mm -hmm. not her first, not her second. What do you think of her, first of all, as a person? As a person, she's extremely strong, Sean. I was very impressed with that. We walked through the apartment and I said, look, look at your view. We're looking down at Central Park. You and I both moved here. We first came as tourists, then we both moved here. I said, and look at you. You're living over the place where every tourist in New York City comes. You come from a different country. You speak so many languages. You're married to a man who could be the president of the United States. You could become the first lady. If that's not the American dream, I don't know what is. And she, I said, do you pinch yeah. yourself? when you're walking through there it is we, we, at that moment I said do you pinch yourself when you're walking through this apartment yeah. she said Ainsley I don't have time to pinch myself <laughs> <laughs> yeah by the way I've been in that very same room and I feel like you know I got to be careful I don't want to mess anything up in that room <laughs> I know. all right it's beautiful uh, it's a pretty extensive uh, interview you asked her very specific questions about for example the women coming forward about Donald Trump and I, I thought she gave a very strong answer Here every it is. oh okay I was not surprised in one way because, as I said before, everything was organized and it, it is three weeks before the elections. Uh, all these women coming out and uh, they are allegations that they are not true. Uh, why now? Why three weeks before the election? Um, and uh, what they're accusing my husband, that is not the person that I know. What is your message to these women? What would you like to say to them? That all the allegations should be handled in a court of law and without the evidence. To accuse somebody is a man or a woman, it's damaging and it's unfair. Why do you think they would make this up then? Because they want to damage the presidency of my husband. And it was all planned, was all organized from the opposition. You know, Ainsley, I think you raise a very, very tough point about these women, but I was watching Judge Jeanine Pirro over the weekend. And for example, one of the main accusers was on a, a flight with Donald Trump and the guy that was sitting in the seat next to them totally debunked that story. But when you reveal it three weeks before an election, it becomes very difficult for the person being accused. What did you think of her answer on that? Yeah, I mean, I thought her answer was fair. She said, there's no evidence, so let's take this to court. 
proved to me you just can't come out a few weeks before the election and damage my husband's reputation and say these things about a father without any evidence. Um, but from a woman's perspective, I mean, I definitely see both sides. And here they are. Like she said, it was coordinated. So many women came out at one point. She made a, she did make a good point saying, why didn't one or two come out periodically if that were the case? Why didn't they come out immediately when this happened, if it did happen? She said, why yeah. did they all come out together? And it happened to be just a few, you know, 22 days out from the election. You know, and it's also relevant in this sense that I interviewed Juanita Broderick, Paula Jones, and Kathleen Willey, and Kathy Shelton. And one of the things that surprised me in that interview, Ainsley, was they didn't get requests to be interviewed by many of the same media outlets that have gone wall to wall on this. You asked one really important follow-up question that I want to sneak in here, and that is what she thinks about them probing Bill Clinton, considering we know that the Monica story is true, we know the Jennifer story is true, and he did pay $850,000 to Paula Jones. Let's roll it. Is it fair for the media to bring up Bill Clinton's past or for Donald Trump to bring up Bill Clinton's past? Well, if they bring my past, why not? So they, they're asking for it? They're asking for it. Mm -hmm. they, they started. They started from the, from the beginning of the campaign, putting my, my picture from modeling days, mm -hmm. as you want that to be your first lady. That was my modeling days, and I'm proud what I did. I worked very hard. I think that was a good answer. Ainsley, just to uh, tell people, programming note, set your alarm, the entire interview uh, with Milani airs tomorrow morning, right? That's right. Tomorrow from 6 to 9 Eastern time, we're going to be on with Milani. I sat down with her for an hour and a half talking about how they wow. decided to run together as a couple, her immigration papers. People have questioned whether or not she came here legally. She talks about that. Her advice to her husband for the debate on Wednesday, why we don't see her out on the campaign trail as much, that, that answer was a strong answer answer and when are we going to see her out more and Ivanka more right. Pe people always request those those two things to all of us so there you go right. lots and right. lots more that I'm not including all right Ainsley great interview great job as Thanks, always Sean. thank you so Thanks, much for Sean. sharing it with us and coming up the FBI releases new documents about the Clinton email server investigation and reveals that a senior State Department official tried to cut a quid pro quo deal over the classification of Hillary's emails we're going to have the details coming up straight ahead And welcome back to Hannity. We're live from the Vegas Strip, the MGM Grand. Joining us now, the host of Justice, Judge Jeanine Pirro, the chairman of the Tea Party Forward Movement, civil rights activist, longtime friend, Niger Innes, and from the Washington Times, Charlie Hurt. Um, I got to praise you. You had such an amazing show this weekend. You broke a lot of news about you, you had one person after another debunking these women that the media has gone nuts with, but they ignore WikiLeaks. Well, they ignore WikiLeaks, and all of these women, we were at least able to prove uh, with the Bill Clinton women, they had all made statements. They all had corroboration. Let's put that away. Then the man just arrives from England, debunks the whole idea of the woman in the first class cabin. By the way, she's the one that said 15 minutes was okay, but after 15 yeah, minutes, yeah. I was Second uncomfortable. Second base, okay, but don't, don't do anything after that. <laughs> and then the other Second. guy, it was a cousin who claims that, that Donald Se Second sexually... base, you are taking us back to the 70s. I know, I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm no spring chicken. Well, listen, aside from that, the other thing is that the, way, the New York says, Times is here, they're going to report all this. I this know, is... don't, don't admit that. He also says that the woman who says she's molested yeah. invited Donald Trump after the alleged molestation to a restaurant. He didn't go, so now she's upset. Her own cousin said it. Niger? Oh, you look, I've, I've got memories, uh, speaking of flashbacks, I've got memories of Anita Hill and Clarence Thomas, you know, and I remember how that was, that bomb was dropped at the last minute when history was about to be made with Justice Thomas. Back and how to the that old smear, playbook. Back to the old playbook, and that smear has lasted to this day, so much so that in the African American Museum, you have more on Anita Hill than you have Justice Clarence that, that's Thomas. That's And then you see this Project Veritas tape where they, they are fomenting violence, they're admitting it, and admitting coordination with the Clinton campaign and the DNC, and it goes straight up to the White House. Yeah, no, it, it really is truly incredible. And then, and then, of course, you know, you have this uh, the, the firebombing of the of the headquarters. Yeah, in, North Carolina. In North Imagine Carolina. if it was a Democrat. God forbid. A Dem if yeah, absolutely. But but you listen to the television, to the news, and the people are actually talking about. Well, maybe it was a Trump supporter that did it. Yeah. What are you talking about? And you know, if, if oh there's God. any one of these uh, Machiavellian, if, if, it is. Yeah. And if, if if anything happens at a, at a Trump rally, it is blamed directly on Donald Trump. Of 
course, something like this happened. We don't know what happened with the firebombing thing. But the idea that people would even entertain right. the notion. But here's the deal. They've covered all the. They have created a false story, a narrative, violence at Trump rallies. Now that we know it's fomented entirely and organized entirely by Democrats, you know, how do we get that message to the American people in the next 21 days? It's going to be very hard because the mainstream media is absolutely opposed to it. It's really up no, to they're Donald in the Trump. No, they are an extension of Hillary. Right. It is up to Donald Trump at this debate on Wednesday night to do it. To, and you know what? He's got to do their job again, right? I, I, absolutely. No question about it. He's got to do their job. And you know what? Things like this backfire. I mean, the pylon is so profound. I have so much faith in the American so people. So do I. You've never had such a sneak preview of the corruption and the I'm not sure. I, I, had I, for I the first time, the I have no feel how this is going to turn out. The fact that he is still standing after the last three weeks, what he has endured from That's the right. media. By the way, he's up in exactly Ohio right. by four, yeah. tied in yeah. Nevada here and yeah. tied in North Carolina. I got a break. Uh, all right, we'll, con we'll continue. Hannity, MGM Grand, and I'll be gambling in about <laughs> six minutes. Straight ahead. <laughs> All right, unfortunately, that's all the time we have left this evening. Now, quick programming notes. Don't forget, set your alarm and wake up early so you can watch Ainsley's full interview with Melania Trump. It's all happening on Fox and Friends in the morning. Also, this Wednesday, the final presidential debate, Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, moderated by Fox News Channel's own Chris Wallace. Don't miss it. It's happening right here on the Fox News Channel. All right, we are here tomorrow night from the MGM Grand. It's Hannity out. I'm hitting the tables. Have a good night.